Hi guys, today we're going to have a look at how integration is applied in um, relation to kinematics. So let's have a little look here. We're going to deal with a velocity displacement acceleration question. So I'm just going to remind us, we've done a lot of this where given the acceleration, velocity and displacement, we spent a lot of time being able to move from displacement to the velocity to the acceleration through differentiation. But of course now we realise the importance sometimes we don't always have the start point here. We may know the acceleration or the velocity and have to work out one of these functions here. So doing that reverse process, of course, we're going to be relying on our integration techniques. OK, so let's have a look at this question here. Right, we have got an acceleration function here. And when I look at this, we want to find the displacement. Displacement ooh, and distance, which connects to displacement. OK, so we've got this. Somehow we need to get down to this. So we've got a lot of integrating to do. So let's have a look at what A looks like. Find the displacement of the velocity at any time t. So we want to get the function in terms of t of our displacement. All right, well, if we are given the acceleration, the first thing we can do is find the velocity through integrating. So we know that vt is going to equal the integral of at with respect to t. So can we do that? Can we find the integral of 6t minus 2 with respect to t? Well, I'd sure hope you could at this point. Most of you pretty quickly should come up with what we've got t squared over 2 and we want a 6 there, so we put it, minus 2t plus c. Bit of neatening up there, we've got 3t squared minus 2t plus c. There's our expression for velocity, but hang on, we can't do a lot about getting the displacement because we've got an unknown quantity here. So this is where finding our constant of integration is going to help us. So let's have a look. Where can we get some information linking the time and the velocity? Well, it says initially. We know initially means t equals zero. We have an initial velocity. OK, so straight away, I know that when t equals zero, v of zero is equal to five. So we can put that in there, can't we? I know the velocity is equal to five when the time is equal to zero. So we've got zero minus zero plus c and we've got our constant of integration is equal to 5 here. So let's go and put uh, our velocity function up here. So we've got vt now for sure is 3t squared minus 2t plus 5. OK, well, we've got the velocity. We've got to go back one more step for our displacement. So let's, let's do that. We know that the displacement, let me come over here xt is equal to the integral of our velocity, so let's put that down, the integral of 3t squared minus 2t plus 5 with respect to t. That should be a pretty nice integral there. Oh, perfect. We've got a t cubed minus d squared plus 5t plus c. Once again, we've got our constant of integration. All right, once again, we haven't got, there's our expression, for the displacement, but we haven't got our constant. So let's go and have a look. Where's the information we've got? Well, initially, we know that it is one meter from its origin. So we know that x of zero is equal to one. So let's go and put that in then. x of zero is equal to one. Put zero in here. What have we got? Zero minus zero. plus 0 plus c. So we know that c is equal to 1. So what's our final expression for displacement? We have xt equal to t cubed minus t squared plus 5t plus 1. So we can check that one off. Now it says find the displacement of the body after 5 seconds. OK. Well, let's go over here to the next page. We want the displacement of the body after five seconds. So that's basically saying when we want to find 
x of 5. All right. So xt was what? Uh, t cubed minus t squared plus 5t plus 1. So we can substitute our t equals 5 in there. So we've got x of 5. So we've got 125 minus 5 squared, 25 plus 25 plus 1. So we end up with x of 5. 125 minus 25 is 120 plus 125, so they cancel out. We've got 125 plus 1, 126 metres. What does that actually say? What does that mean in context here? That means here's our origin. Um, it is now after 5 seconds at 126 metres. So 126 here when t is equal to 5. All right, now let's have a look at uh, find the distance. Distance is very different to displacement. We've talked about this before. The displacement is where it is. The distance travelled is how far has it gone in that period of time. Okay, so let's go back over here. This is where it is after five seconds. Well, we need to think about where it started from. Okay, and what did we know about initially? We knew when t equals zero, what was our initial? It was one meter from the origin. So x t equals one. So let's put that in here. When t equals zero, it is one. So the distance traveled then is this distance here, isn't it? As you can see, logically that's 126 minus one, but I'm gonna write it out properly. When you're after a distance, it's really important to consider this. It's where you are, well, after five seconds, minus where you started initially. It's really important because this only gives you where you end up at. It doesn't take into consideration where you started with. You could have started at 125 metres from the origin, then the distance travelled would only be one. So our distance travelled 126 minus one, it is travelled 125 metres in the first five seconds.